Well, good afternoon, guys. I had to create a different um, different life right now because somehow we were having difficulties with StreamYard. So please, hopefully, you guys can switch to uh, and connect to me right now. I'll give you a few seconds because I really was hoping to see all of you and hopefully answer your questions. I'm going to run some uh, commercial for a few seconds and hopefully you guys are going to be able to see. Our next class are coming in January 22nd and also we are... Um, uh, hoping you guys subscribing to our website, learndispatchtoday.com. Also, you've been joining our mission to change trucking for better. On our YouTube channel, we have membership. It's only $3.99 per month. And those money are going to uh, our students that we are giving the free classes. Uh, and of course, today we're going to be talking about how to search the loads, okay? And as many of you know, we are going to be talking about one of the biggest load boards out there, the debt. Uh, we are partners with them, and if you are still looking to connect and subscribe to them, make sure to use our code 2017475, and you're going to get one free month. So give me a few seconds. I just want to make sure I send the link to my students, the new link, because I was hoping to answer their questions. I'll be back in 30 seconds. So stay connected. Well, hopefully you guys can hear me. Please, if you switch to the new uh, live, let me know that you can hear me. So uh, we are gonna be continuing this. I just sent the new link to my students because most of them, they were uh, waiting for this. And I wanna make sure to see familiar faces. So what is the difference between uh, posting, posting your truck, posting your equipment and searching for the load. As many of you know, when we post the truck and we covered it yesterday, we are telling all the brokers that we have available equipment. And by doing that, what's going to happen? Phone calls going to happen, right? They're going to start calling you and asking you about your truck. Because what they are trying to do, they are trying to book their load. Lots of people, especially people who are dispatching outside of the country, they are afraid of posting equipment. Why? Simple as because they are afraid to receive phone calls. But you guys understand that when somebody needs your equipment, what's going to happen? That means that you have power of negotiation, right? That means that you can take your sweet time. You can ask details. You can pause. You can really calculate what you need and you ask for more money. So this is the difference between posting and searching loads. When you search loads and we're going to see it today, 
it's going to be the same data. When you click between posting your loads, for example, your truck in Chicago and searching for loads in Chicago, you're going to see the same loads. The difference is when you searching for loads, no one is calling you. You are the one who is going to be calling. So let's see. Thank you so much for confirming that you can hear me. And hopefully our stream is gonna go well. Yes, you can hear me. That's good. Okay, so let's continue. I'm gonna share the screen and we are gonna be looking how to search for the load and some tricks which I can advise you to do. So let me switch to the screen so you can see that better. And I'm going to be here in the corner. Let me move this banner because you guys know the codes already. It's also going to be under the video. So here is what? Dead power. Again, search trucks is going to go for brokers, right? You can do it. Do you want to see what's going to happen? Let's say you search trucks, right? You can have two choices, any or only. Are you going to uh, search for any trucks or specifics? Of course, if the broker has a drive-in uh, uh, load, he's not going to be searching for flatbeds, right? So let's say, let's put when. Okay, where? I don't know. Newark, Newark, New Jersey, right? Destination. Let's keep it open. Let's see what's going to show for us if we are just going to put that we are looking for the truck in Newark, New Jersey. Let's pretend that you're a broker or maybe you're just curious about your competition, right? So let's see for today. And we're not going to put that hat. We're going to put that we are looking for 53 feet and, um, I don't know, 40, 46,000 on a way. Pay attention to this. Search back. Search back to number two refers for two hours back so always always switch this to at least 24 hours so let's search so that's what brokers see they see that right now in newark new jersey these companies have trucks so midway inc national express rj express mpn group Leader Transport, A and B Express. So who is this? This is a trucking company, right? You can refine your search. I want to see 48 hours ago, right? So let's see. Well, still showing you 23 trucks available. So that's when you guys post. That's how they see your equipment. So let's open, for example. These guys for RJ Express, they are exactly looking for what? Go from Pennsylvania, their truck is posted in Pennsylvania, and they want to do the short load. They want to stay in New Jersey. They want to go exactly to North, North Bergen, New Jersey. You can see companies MC. Remember, this is a truck in company MC, right? If you click on RJ Express and you click more at that, what is it going to show you? Well, it's going to show you that they open company in 2020. It's going to show their address. For example, they're from Philadelphia. It's going to tell that, that they are carrier for after ice for property, right? It's going to show if they have a broker authority or not. So they do not have, but they are common carrier. What else is it going to show you? It's going to show you that they have active bond with a minimum requirement for FMCSA, 750000 right? It's effective since uh, 11.06, uh, 2019. They even have information who is holding their bond and uh, their insurance. And also they have company background information. They have email for dispatch. I, I believe it's a primary contact. So... They do air ride, e tracks They have five power units, seven drivers. They have one owner operators. Well, it seems like they need to catch up on their safety and they need to update their information on the safer. 
So what do they do? They do expedite ground. They have trailer inter-exchange, multi-stop. They do LTL uh, ca capabilities. So this is information on this trucking company, okay? So this is another one, Midway Inc. This is their MC. If you're going to see, you can check their information, their phone number, where are they from. This one's from North Carolina. They have also insurance on file to make sure that they are active in all other information. You can even see their safety, right? If that safety good or not, but we're not going to go into this. Those are real companies. It's a public knowledge. So I'm not exposing nobody. I'm just uh, giving you examples. So this is was search trucks. Who is using it? Brokers. Or you can see your competitors. If you are searching for the names, go ahead. Do not do not use again Risa Truck in Transport International, Leader Transport, AJ Million. So this is the names of carriers, right? Yesterday we covered post trucks. We should be all clear on this, how to post trucks, how to uh, have a plan A, B, C, and D. Why would you be searching for the load? So one more time, when I am teaching my students, I am teaching them to always post their equipment because you should not be scared of the phone calls coming to you, right? But let's say I am on the phone with a broker right now and he's offering me load to go to Atlanta. Well, I haven't been going to Atlanta with a drive in for a long time. So I want to make sure I can get my truck out of there. So the fastest way for me to do is to see what's going to happen in Atlanta. Let's say we are delivering on Friday, right? We pick up early today. We are delivering tomorrow at the noon in Atlanta. I want to see what's going on before I commit. And I want to see the prices approximately. I want to see the closest loads to uh, my delivery. So that's when you guys are going to choose search loads. Or you're going to tell them, well, I need a minute to see what's going on. So look at this. Oh, well, TQL is calling. We're not going to answer them. Let's just ignore them for now. Are you searching for any or only? Again, we know our equipment, right? So if I am taking care of driving, I am searching for when, right? When standard. Where is it going to come from? Well, I am trying to book load to Atlanta, Georgia, right? Now I still have a plan. So if this guy is going to Atlanta with delivery tomorrow afternoon on Friday, I need to know, is he going to keep going? Where does he live? What is my plan? In this case, because guys, remember, I am located in Chicagoland. Most of my carriers are from Chicagoland. So most of them, they would like to come back to do their restarts in their hometown, right? Because that's what makes sense. So I want to bring him back. Let's say he's parking in um, Bolingbroke, right? Bolingbroke, uh, Illinois. Before I commit, I want to see what are the chances for me to get reload on Friday to bring him back. And it's going to be for which date? For Friday. I am going to put dad had not more than 75 miles from my delivery from Atlanta. And I am going to keep it bigger dad had around my desired destination. Why? Because I can go to Wisconsin with delivery on Monday. I can go maybe to Iowa, going through Chicago. I can even go to Minnesota maybe. So I'm actually going to put here 200 miles. So I'm still on the phone or maybe I told them that I will be back in two minutes. I'll call them back. I want to see what's going on first. So again, 53. 46,000 and search back again. If I am only going to live two hours, so let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, search two hours. So now it's showing 34 exact loads for my request. 
What was my request? Tomorrow from Atlanta, 75 miles dead head around Atlanta, going back to Bolingbrook, Illinois for driving with 150 miles dead head from desired destination. Let's see an increase. Instead of two hours, let's put 20 hours. Still, did it change anything? Only, only one load was added. Okay? But a lot of times, if you guys are not going to increase this, you are sitting afternoon, and what's going to happen? You do not see loads. Let's see one more thing. Let's change the date. Let's look for today. Let's look for today. And let's put back that two hours, right? So let's see. Let's see. Right now, it's going to show zero results. So nobody posted load from Atlanta going to Bolibrook in the last two hours. So it's almost 3 p.m. Uh, in Chicago. It's 4 p.m. in Atlanta. Let's add it. Let's put 24 hours back. Do I still have a chance to find something? See, one load showed up. So that means that this load was posted by broker eight, see, eight hours ago. Again, let's go add it and let's put it for tomorrow. Okay. We are back to our 36 exact matches. Okay. Anytime you want to do something, you can add it, you can delete. So let's see. Let's see if we want only, only for example, flatbed. Let's switch the city. I don't know, guys. Give me ideas. Where are you guys um, looking for? I don't know. Let's put, let's put uh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Going back. Let's put anywhere just to see what's going on. You guys searching. You're not sure what you're gonna do. So let's see. How many loads do we have? We only have 96 exact matches for flatbed from Oklahoma going everywhere, 48 states, for uh, Friday. Do you see this extra tools, lab makers, market conditions? What happened to the tri hole? Now the tri hole does not show up. Why? Because you guys do not have this destination, desired destination. Let's add it. Let's put, we want to go to Chicago. Let's change equipment, right? What do this time? Should we choose reefer and see what's going on? Okay, for Friday, search. We're talking about nine exact loads, only nine for Friday, right? Now look at this. We have option of best hole. So let's click on this. So try hole, right? So they are telling you, if you do want to make more money, instead of going exactly from Oklahoma City, going to Chicago, you can approximately make $2,500. But if you maybe go first to Missouri or Nebraska or Tennessee, and then gonna go to Chicago. You guys can make 4,400. So let me see. Does it make sense? Well, let's open Google uh, Google Maps, right? Google Maps. Okay. Where is Oklahoma? Which zone is Oklahoma? Right? Which region, guys? It's Midwest, right? My computer is slow today. What's going on? Okay. So Oklahoma City. Guys, can you still can you still hear me because I see my image is getting frozen and I I really hope that this life makes sense. Okay, we're going to Chicago, right? Okay. So this would be 
our direct shipment. We came from Chicago to Oklahoma. We're going to call it head hole, right? Head hole. Our strong load from Chicago going to Oklahoma. If we're going to go back from Oklahoma going back to Chicago, we're going to call it back hole, right? Two loads. Hole, back hole. What are they telling us? They are telling us right here that we can break it in the middle and make more money. So let's look at this. Omaha, Nebraska. So they're telling us instead of going back to Chicago, you should go, you should go first, take the load to Omaha, Nebraska, and then go to Chicago. You're going to make more money. Let's think logically about it. Now we are, have 924 miles, so it's more miles than just go straight to Chicago. We're talking about Friday, right? Picking up in Friday. Let me delete this, Oklahoma. My driver lives back in Chicago. So would it make sense for me to do tri -hole? So when you guys are thinking about try hole and the options they give you, you still need to analyze, right? I am in Oklahoma City. They want me to go to Nebraska first, for example, and then go to Chicago. Well, first, I need to make sure I find the load which can unload on Saturday. With reefers, it's easier. With dry lands, it's 50-50 chance. Flatbeds does not really unload that many loads on Saturday or Sunday. So if I have a reefer, yes, I have a chance to still get unloaded in Nebraska, get loaded on Saturday, and that go towards Chicago. Making extra thousand bucks, maybe, maybe 1200. Well, does it make sense? No, it doesn't really make sense. I better get the load from Oklahoma, get to Chicago, He's going to be in Chicago on Saturday afternoon, make my driver to do restart so he's good to go on Monday morning, and then we're going to start fresh cycle, right? So a lot of times when you guys are going to be looking at all these options, please make sure you understand it has to make sense because it depends on the day of the week. It depends on your plan. It depends where your driver lives. Some try hole options are not going to make sense. But that's how we search the loads, right? You choose the truck. You put the origin of the truck, where you're delivering or where you're parking, where you want to go. You choose the deadhead from origin, deadhead to your destination, type of the load you're looking for. If you are looking for the flatbed, if you are looking, if you are looking for partial, you put in how big is your trailer, right? Again, size, you put in the weight, and just remember here that you need to put your uh, hours back. Okay, availability. You can change all this. And you can even put your name and your MC if you want. In this case, they will call you. Let's do one more time. New load search. Only or any. So look at this. If we're going to choose any, any, any what? Any vans, any flatbeds, any containers, canistogas. Okay, let's put any canistogas. Origin. Well, let's keep Oklahoma City. For when? Let's look for today. What's going to happen? Okay, 48. Maybe we have Conestoga, which is 48. The Conestoga can scale up to 48,000. In this case, you need to know your empty scale ticket because every truck, every trailer combo is going to be different. Just because you have flatbed doesn't mean that you can scale 48,000. Sometimes if you have a heavier truck or you have a heavier trailer or you have more equipment, you cannot even scale 47, right? So you need to you know your empty scale ticket. Let's put 48 hours, search back. See, for Conestoga, only three loads. Again, refine your search pops up here. 
you can close it, add it. Let's add it. Let's put any van right now, van standard. Let's put Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. For today, for today, where would we want to go? Again, you can post by states. Let's put states. Maybe Kansas. Let's just choose some of them. Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Iowa, uh, Nebraska. So let's choose those. Search. Now, see, it's only you searching for the loads going to the certain states, right? So this is your loads for today. You can open and you're going to see the, the details. Again, Los Angeles, California, pick up, going to Kansas City. It's going to show you the trip. Remember, same as on posting your trucks. So that shows you how you're going to go. But again, guys, look at this. Is that really how our truck goes? No, they do not go through 70. 70 is called the road of death. When I see dispatcher posting, oh, we are getting 15,000 per week, and they show this, that means that they don't know what they're doing because all we have to go all the way through the Salt Lake City and take 80, or we have to go down on 40. No trucks are driving through this roads and 70. It's very dangerous. It's very steep. You do not go there. Make sure as a dispatcher, you guys know. Let's go back. Who is a broker? Alert Inc. Uh, you need more information? Well, here you go. You can see how they pay, right? You can scroll down. They are newer broker. So let's see. Wow. Upside down, upside down. Is that a good broker? Look at this. Their score was 65, 49, 75, 70, 23. Well, guys, you have to be very, very desperate dispatcher or the owner who does not pay attention to this to book load with them, right? Because their score is very bad. And when you look at what's going on, it shows that they are not stable company. So please make sure you pay attention to this. Again, you can see the weight, you can see score, day to pay, and the price. Let's open another one. You already know that you're not going to call this company. So let's see if we have somebody better, right? Okay, Los Angeles going to St. Louis, Missouri, inland transportation. There's a phone number, MC number. Again, you can see what's going on with them. You see if they have bond uh, available, all the information. Where? Their score is better. They never went under 90. So at least you are going to receive your money. Any questions so far, guys, for searching loads? Uh, let's add it. Let's say now, instead of going here, we want to post by zones, right? The guy says that he lives in uh, South Carolina. So what are we going to put? We can put something going towards South Carolina or exactly going to his, uh, his uh, hometown. So what are we going to put? Z3. What else? Can we make the load first to Midwest and then take another load? Yes. So why don't we put Z3? Or oh, actually, in this case, I don't want to put Z3 because I don't want to go to Florida. Florida is dead. So I am only going to put South Carolina, North Carolina, and I am going to put all the states which are on the way from California, which makes sense to break down. So I can put Oklahoma. I can put Missouri. I can put Tennessee. I can put Arkansas, Mississippi. So let's see what's going on. Search. So we are searching. We have 48. Why are we not seeing any drive ends? Because, guys, look at this. How many drive ends are 48 feet? Not that many goes lower. So let's fix it. We have 53 foot uh, trailer. So, and he can scale because now we change the equipment. 
he can scale 46,000. So let's see what's going on. Wow, 181 loads still available for today. Let's see the highest paying load. Remember, we choose with you South Carolina and some states on the way to South Carolina. Hopefully we can break it and make that try hole, which makes sense. So, so far, look at this, 10,000, 10,000. Let's find something not that far from us. So let's see. Look, uh, Rancho Domingos, California, going to Portland, Tennessee, 8,700. Swift Logistics, right? Going to Mississippi, 8,500. Going to Tennessee, 8,500. Let's see how much they pay exactly to go to uh, South Carolina. How can you do? You can organize. You can organize your destination by the state. So Tennessee going to go first, and here's the South Carolina. So look, to go directly to South Carolina, they only paying 6500 Wouldn't it make sense? to take the load for 8,500, negotiate it to 92, maybe 9,100 to Tennessee, and then take the short load, which is gonna pay also good because it's gonna be short load from Tennessee to South Carolina. So that would be try hold, okay? I mean, I don't really know um, what other options here, guys, with searching for the loads, uh, besides just knowing how to adjust all this, right? So again, add it, okay? Now we only want to put exactly a city. Maybe we wanna go exactly to Memphis, Tennessee. We don't wanna that have that far from Los Angeles because it is nightmare driving in California. So let's put back, again, 42 matches. So let's double check. This is what's on a search load. So drive in from Los Angeles, going to Memphis, Tennessee for two days. 50 dead head from a pickup, 150 from desired destination. Shows 42 exact matches. Should we see if we post the truck, if that's going to show us again, 42 matches. So let's see how the program works, right? So let's post the truck today from Los Angeles, right? Exactly to what? To Memphis, Tennessee, right? For when? 53. We always going to put maximum 46. It's hard for me because my screens, my screens are big, so I have to uh, turn turn around. Forty six zero zero. Okay, I'm not gonna put no comments. Let's post. So how many loads are here? Forty seven. So when we post the truck, we just have what three or four loads extra. So now what's gonna happen? Now they see our truck. So now, if they are interested in our truck, we would be receiving phone calls, right? So highest paying load, kind of the same. Going to look at this. They are calling us already. Dispatch. Yes, ma'am. I'm calling about your Los Angeles truck looking to go to Memphis. My Los Angeles truck going to Memphis? Yes, sir. What do you have? First, let me start with your MC because I need to make sure that we can work with you. What is your MC? 177-190. Hold on a second. My uh, computer is loading. 177. 190. 190. Okay. Lee Truck Brokerage out of Arkansas. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're good to go. So what do you have, sir? I have a one and one picking up out of Bell Gardens. Hold on. May I have a zip code for the pickup? Yes, ma'am. It is 90201. Okay. And the delivery zip up. code? Okay. That is 
401. Okay. What time is the pickup today? It is until 5 p.m. Uh, first come, first serve. Okay. What is the commodity? It is clean, palletized plastic, non-recycled. Okay. How heavy is it? The, the weight on that is 43,900. Does that include pallets? Yes, ma'am. That's full weight. Okay. And when would we be delivering to Arkansas? It would be on Monday the 13th. From Mon 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. first come first serve. Monday the 13th. And what are you paying? We've been moving these for 64, but I have some wiggle room on this. 64. Let me check. Let me check um, what market have been paying. Can I put you on a brief hold? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, guys, remember we are doing live and we were just doing the practice. So let's see. You guys going to go to quick rate search. Remember here in the tools, you're going to put where you at, Los Angeles. We need to go to what? Jansboro, Arkansas, right? Let's see at least how much they are paid. So they are paying 68.40. He's offering us uh what what is 62? Let's see. Uh sorry, sir. How much are you paying? 64, but I have some we were in one minute. 60, yeah. It seems like the market have been paying around 68, 69, but um I we do have a dead head, and this is a little bit heavier. I really need to be at 7,300, sir. The best I can do is 65. We we just did one for 65. So that was your best. You said that you had a wiggle room. You offered me 65. Two minutes ago said that you had a wiggle room. Oh, I thought it was 64. Okay. Would you like to put my offer in for 7,000? Yes, ma'am. Please hold. I can check with my manager. Okay. I'll put you on a hold. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. So, what did we do? We check what everybody's paying, right? He's calling us. He started with what, 63, 64, 65 is his best. We ask it for 72. Did we ask about commodities? Yes, it's plastic, it's palletized, it's a little bit heavier. What time is right now in California? Well, right now is there 113. Pickup is till when? Till five. Don't you need to see if you can make it? Well, we're not that far. We are 14 minutes away. You need to make sure that your driver is empty, ready to go, right? So how many miles do we have? Today is Thursday. If he's going to pick up today, let's say he has a fresh hours, right? Can he make the transit? So that's what you guys need to do, 1781. So usually trucks make from 600 miles a day today. With his loading, unloading, he probably going to only catch up 350 miles. So 380, let's deduct 380. So 1781 minus 380 is leaving us with 1400 by tomorrow. 1400, tomorrow is Friday. Now deduct 600. So by Saturday, 14 minus 600, what do we have? We have 800. Saturday, another 600 miles. So yes, transit is possible. Can he fit restart? No, he's not going to be able to fit restart. But you need to make sure that he has enough hours to make this transit. So let's see. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, I can't do seven. Would you be willing to do 66? 66. What is your direct number and your name? Uh, my number is 800. Okay. 736-7533. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that goes to our receptionist. Just ask for Aiden. Okay, Aiden. Thank you so much. Let me check with my management and I'll call you back. Okay. If you can't do that, call me back, please. Okay. Thank you. So, again, we want to have the upper hand, right? Well, are we going to agree to 66? No. First of all, we ask for 72. Let's see. What else is there, right? So let's look. 
what other loads are paying? Look, we can go to Arkansas, who is paying 75, right? Loads midnight, delivers on Monday, palletized paper, right? No one already paying 78, right? We can go to Mississippi. We can go to Memphis right here, 11 p.m. pickup later today. So again, you need to pay attention to hours. Right now, we are talking just about our imaginary drugs because remember, guys, we are live and we were just practicing the difference between posting and searching, right? Let's change something. Let's say that we do not have a plan and we deleted the destination. So we, one of those dispatchers who post their trucks, they don't have a plan, they don't know what they want. So let's see how many loads are we talking about. Let's say now look at this. 2,500 loads. So is it going to make sense for you to answer all the phone calls? If you know for sure, for example, you're not going to go to Oregon because maybe you don't even have the permit to go to Oregon. Your driver might not ever go to East Coast. Your driver does not want to go to Colorado because he doesn't want to go to Wyoming right now. Your driver is not comfortable to go to uh, Washington State from Los Angeles. Maybe your driver wants to exactly get home. So does it make sense to post your truck with open destination? Are you actually physically going to be able to look at all of this and find that perfect load? Well, yes, you can go the worst case scenario let's click on a best pain rate wow look at this los angeles to phoenix arizona guys sixteen thousand dollars wow can somebody pay you sixteen thousand dollars to go to phoenix arizona for 372 miles well let's see there should be a catch this is 10 loads a week right so you have to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for $16,000. Now, do you need to multiply this? Yes, back and forth. What else do you need to do? You need to make sure how many hours, because we only have cycle on our hours of service, 70 hours. Are you going to be able to do 15 runs back and forth between California to Arizona with a legal run, with driving 11 hours, sleeping for 10 hours. Can you do this, right? So, wow, the best paying load. Does it make sense? Maybe yes, maybe no. You need to figure it out. What is this? Fontana, California going to Massachusetts, 12,000. Why are they paying higher? Well, you know why? Because look, they need minimum cargo insurance, 150,000. Most of us have only 100. Dispatch, how can I help? Hey there, I was wondering if you got that truck available in California for tomorrow morning. In California? We have it for today. Today? You wouldn't be open to taking a load tomorrow morning for a second? No, because I'm not a desperate dispatcher. My truck is not going to sit there for 24 hours, honey. So if you have something today, we can help you today. Thank you very much, honey. Okay. You're welcome. Again, are you willing to sit till tomorrow? Well, if I am a desperate dispatcher, yeah, I guess I am willing. Or maybe my driver is still finishing his restart, but do they need to know? No, in this case, I would say, well, let's talk about it. Like, let's see what are you offering. So now, if you decide to wait till tomorrow, you need to get more money. But if your driver is ready to go, if he is unloaded, if he has hours to keep driving, you would never sit extra day. Because extra day in trucking nowadays, guys, for driving, it's at least... 12 to 1500 a day for reefer it's between 2000 to 2400 a day for flatbed step deck we're going back to 15 2000 just because market is going down now for flatbed step decks canistogas why due to 
season. So less construction, less road repairs. So that's why market for those equipment goes down, right? So would you sit an extra day? Would you like your reefer or your dry van? Do you really think that they're going to give you extra 1,500 or 2,000 loads to compensate you for lost day? Plus, you're losing day here. Now you you don't have enough time to do restart. What's going to happen? Now you're pushing your cycle. Now you're going to sit somewhere in the middle of America just because, oh my God, you took the load with maybe $500 extra. Please stop being desperate, dispatcher. Start thinking logically. See what's going on. Let's see one more thing. So this was posted search loads. Let's go back to search loads. Uh, any other equipment? Is anybody's asking me how? Let's answer some questions. Okay. Uh, so what is the most efficient battery say way to use tri hole way Oracle? We have a really good video on tri hole. Please rewatch in in our videos. We already discuss uh, tri hole. You need to know where you at and what makes sense. So tri hole, you need to break it in the middle going towards your desired destination if you in uh if you are in los angeles right now right and you need to go to south carolina that's something which oh memphis tennessee are you gonna make try hole going to washington state or going to montana no it has to make sense somewhere in between but to go to the strong areas so if they're paying good pain low to oklahoma yes you're gonna take oklahoma and then oklahoma to Memphis. Okay. So one more time. Is that really simple to is that simple to post your truck to search the loads? Yes. You just really need to know what the plan. You need to have a plan. How do you delete your searches? Here you go. You delete them. You delete them. Okay. Uh start again. Only any state, origin, destination. Concentrate on the tools. Where did I go? I went to quick read search. You can choose drive in, you can choose flatbed and reefer. Unfortunately, we do not have specialized equipment here. So, this is a general, general data. I am telling you from my numbers, from whatever they give, it's a 75% accurate. Usually, this is lower. That's why when I ask for more money, I'm not asking, please don't be greedy. Just give me $50 more while I'm not in kindergarten, right? I'm a business person. I know what I'm doing. When you negotiate in thousands, you cannot ask, oh, I just need an extra $100. He started from 63. I asked for 72. I need to meet him at 7,000. My middle, not his middle. My favorite TQL. I am pissed at them today because one of the drivers is not unloading and they are not doing anything about it. Dispatch. Hi, this is Rochelle. Hi, Michelle. How can I help? I'm doing okay. I was looking to see if you guys have anybody that could do a Cali Torino load for me today. Cali Torino. Now we posted our truck. He needs to go to Memphis. There's no, it doesn't say. It just says Los Angeles. Oh, well, on our posting, it says that he has to go to Los Angeles to Memphis, Tennessee. My apologies. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. We posted exactly that we want to go from Los Angeles to Memphis. Should I talk to her? Well, I could have talked to her, guys, because we are live right now, right? So you want to receive the phone calls. But again, I am teaching you to cut the nonsense out. I am not going to go to Reno, Nevada, because what? Reno, Nevada is not the strong tri -hole. Would I go to Reno, Nevada and then from Reno, Nevada go to Memphis? No, Reno, Nevada has no good paying loads right now. So why would I go there? Let's see another TQL. Dispatch. Hey, uh, good afternoon. I'm calling your guys at Vanigapotza, Los Angeles for today. Yes, we still have it. What do you have, sir? Uh, I have a one-on-one -on -one going to Las Vegas if you guys are interested. Las Vegas. No, we posted him uh, that we are looking to go towards Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See, again, 
Now, same TQL calling about our truck. The first girl, she said that they have to go to Reno. This one girl calls about Las, uh, Las Vegas. Believe me, they are looking to cover the same load. Pay attention. Most of the brokers are not really going to post exact city where load's picking up and where is it going. Why? I don't know why. Because we're in logistics. We know how to find the location, right? They're wasting our time. TQL does it. Scotland does it. Uh, other big bro brokerages does it. England. But the worst ones is Scotland and TQL. When you ask them, why are you posting load going to Chicago when it's going to Appleton, Wisconsin? Their excuse is, well, most of the people do not know where is Appleton, Wisconsin. We're in logistics, guys. We do know where is Appleton, Wisconsin. Dispatch. Hey, good afternoon. How are you doing today, ma'am? I am doing well. How are you? I am doing fantastic. This is uh, Brandon with TQL. I was uh, calling to see if you had any available drive vans today. Um, excuse me, not, not today. I'm calling about the van you have posted today in Los Angeles, California. Yes, I um, have van in, in La. Yes, I do have it in Los Angeles, California. What do you have, sir? I have a pickup coming out of City of Industry today, and it's uh, dropping off on Monday in Supersville, Kentucky. Is that something you'd be interested in? Okay, let's talk about it. Uh, okay. So this picks up today between 80 and May I have a zip code for the pickup? Yeah, sure. Give me one moment. Let me pull that up for you. It is uh, 91748. 917? Nine, 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 mm -hmm. Okay. And then for the drop off, it is uh, 40067, Kentucky. 40767? Yep, 40067. Did not come on. What's the city in Kentucky? Uh, Simpsonville. Simpson wheel. Yes, ma'am. Till what time? Till what time is a pickup, hun? It picks up today between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. in uh, City of Industry. It's 30,000 pounds. It's one truckload of general merchandise, and it drops off on Monday between 8 and 3. I'm um, 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Okay. on uh, Monday at Simpsonville, Kentucky. Okay. Um, how much you're looking around to get this one done? How heavy is the load? Uh, 30,000 pounds. I'm sorry. Oh, it's 30,000 pounds. 30,000 pounds? Okay, let me check something. What is your best offer on this? Yeah, we're we'll looking around to get it done. Well, what is your number? Uh, I can run it for 7,000. 7,000? Well, you are lowballing me, huh? Do I sound like a desperate dispatcher? I don't think so. Yeah, well, what, was your, what were you looking around? Well, let's see. Uh, I see going to Kentucky today, everybody was paying from 74 to 78, and that was earlier day. Yeah, so I really need to be at 79, hun. 79? Uh, yeah, that's the best I get ready for it. Uh, okay. 7,200. Oh, well. Okay. Right, thank you for your time, though. Yeah, you can put the offer in. Thank you. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bye-bye. So what did I do, guys? I don't know what are they paying for Kentucky. I went to the load board and I put exactly Los Angeles to Kentucky to see what are the rates were today. And look, the highest paying loads were 74, 77, 78, right? So that's, that's what you have to pay attention to because he was putting it on my shoulders. You give me the number, right? And you guys are going to say, okay, uh, let's see the miles. Oh, my God. We are popular right now in Los Angeles. Okay. Dispatch. Dispatch. What are you with Amtrans? Looking at your Los Angeles truck. LA. LA. Still available. Yeah, it's still available. Uh, actually, may I have your MC first? Because I never work with you guys. No, it's uh, my MC is four four six five three. Okay, I just want to make sure that you approved by, yeah, you're at C. Not the greatest rating, but we can we can try to help you but, out. But, but not the worst. But not, but the, not worst. the worst, right? I mean, A and B sounds uh, better so than C. Good. <laughs> that's good. So of what course. do you have, sir? That's what my parents used to say when I used to bring my report card home. Okay. You know? <laughs> so I was an a, I was a student. I could not even have a, uh, a minus. That's how it was going that's in good. Ukraine, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's okay. good here. Yeah, well, I was more of a troublemaker. Okay, troublemaker. Right. So what All is right. a troublemaker can offer me today? What is a pickup? All pick? right, well, it picks up an electrical commander going to Grantsville, Utah, delivering tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Okay, can I have zip code for pickup? Absolutely. Give me two seconds. Let me get this. Okay, pick up on this is going to be, uh, you, it's going to be 91729. Okay. And the delivery on this is going to be 84029. 84029. Okay. So what time yep. is the pickup? We can load up to 5 p.m. The delivery is going to be uh, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay. What is it called? Very light load. It's a general merchandise, weighs 11,000 pounds, 17 pallets. Okay. And uh, what is your rate? Uh, I got a rate of 33. 33. Let's see. Can I put you on a brief hold? Thank I just, you. I just want to, yeah, I just want to see what's going on. So, first, I want to just see how many loads today we're going from what? from California towards Utah. What was the highest pain load? Look at this, 45, 48, 39, 38, 37. Wow, guys, what is he trying to do? He's trying to find a desperate dispatcher, right? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, sir, seems like market have been paying way better. I really need to be at 4,100 on this. Yeah, I mean you can go and check. Everybody's uh, paying higher. No, I know, I know. But and we're let me ask, that, let uh, me ask you 35. this. Let me ask you this. Do you have any back hole there tomorrow? No, no. We just we just move stuff out of our own warehouse. We mm -hmm. ship out of uh, California, Illinois, Texas, and New Jersey. That's where we ship out of. Okay. So if I'm so going if to don't... be tomorrow in Utah. I'm going to be tomorrow in Utah and I have to go and I can do I can do for you those two I can do 37 and I can need to go move, hold on these at 35 and from Utah then I will need to bring him to Midwest so let's see how many chances only 30 loads and they are not paying that well so your 37 your is the best yes yes yeah, unfortunately, uh, Utah is not a great destination what's, right what's now. Your, what's your best? What's your best? My best would be, since I told you 41, my best would be $4,055. I give you break. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I mean, you ask for break, I gave you break, right? Four you said four, you said 4055. Yeah, I said 41 before. You asked to meet you somewhere, uh, so... Four thousand fifty-five. Let's make it better. Four thousand fifty dollars. I even keep you five dollars for Starbucks. Starbucks is expensive nowadays. Yeah, I don't go there. You don't go there, then? Okay, then we'll keep it four thousand fifty-five. I'm a poor person. I don't spend five dollars on a cup of coffee. Well, would you like to put my offer and call me back? Call me back because I do have a no, lot of phone no, I'm calls. Take, I'm taking care of it right now. You're taking care of it right now? Well, we're not set up with yep. you as well. So what is your direct number? Right. I'm asking right now see if we can do that rate. Okay. I got it at 4050. Okay. But what is your direct number? I need to call you right back. Yep. It's eight uh two it's two oh one two five one seven three three three. I'm extension nineteen. Extension nineteen and your name? My name is Farid, F-A-R-I-D. Farid. Farid, I have a few phone calls coming in. I'll call you right back. I have your direct. So start, try working on that price, and I'll talk to you in two minutes. I am. Okay, All thanks. right, thank you. Bye. So here you go, guys, right? 33, 34, 37, 41. Did I stick to my grounds? Yes, I did. I gave him a break, $45, another $5. What he wants to do, he wants to book that load within 30 seconds from 33 
to go to 4050. Let's look at this. Let's look at this one more time, right? So we are going to be at 4000. So we're going here. What would we do with him tomorrow? Do you need to check? Again, our plan was to go to Memphis. So can we go to Utah and then go to Memphis? Let's check. Let's check really fast. So if we're going to take this, if we're going to take this and then try to find to go to Memphis, Tennessee. So we only have 13 loads. So we're making 4,000 here. We might get low to Arkansas or Mississippi for what? 48, 37. We have to negotiate here. 4,000 plus 47. Still going to put us as what? Almost 9,000. Why would I go through Nightmare when I can book direct load right now to go from Los Angeles, go to the same Mississippi, go to Kentucky for what? 72. And I am not going to lose day in transit. So that's how it works, kids. I'm going to delete it, right? Because I don't want to receive phone calls because probably these guys, uh, poor guys, they don't know that we've been practicing on them, right? But that's what you need to think about, right? Ask the questions, stick to your number, check what's going on, see what everybody else paying, ask them some questions and stick to your grounds. I don't care how many phone calls did we receive, guys. And we were missing a lot of phone calls while we were answering to them. So make sure you always have the game plan and let's answer a few questions. Alex, according to your great knowledge, what should I know about working with new owner operators, being myself a new dispatcher as well? Well, you need to know where they live, their equipment. You need to see their previous growth for the months or two because everybody's going to come to you and tell you, well, I've been making this much money. If he was my, making really great money, ask yourself the question, why would he be looking for the new dispatcher? When people make money with you, they stay with you for years, years, and years. So first, make sure that you know what they were making. Where are they going? Which areas are they comfortable with? And sometimes the driver is going to say, oh, I go everywhere. But if he has an old equipment, are you going to put him through mountains? Are you going to put him through snow? Are you going to bring them to congested East Coast? If something's going to happen and his truck breaks down, he's going to be sitting there in repair shops for months. Okay. So you need to know this. You need to talk about the game plan and you need to ask them to give you the power to choose where are you going because only you can see what's going there and there tomorrow in Utah. You only see what they pay today. So you, as a professional dispatcher, this is a part of your job to make a game plan for them. That's why they need you. We're not a secretary's guys. We're not just sitting there and posting truck, searching for the load, and then making phone calls. Oh, are you going to take it? Oh, and you're not going to take it. Are you going to take it? Or oh, you're not going to take it. Oh, what is the commodity? Oh, hold on. I forgot to ask. Let me call him back. You call back. Guys, we are professional dispatchers. You know the logistics. You know the market. You know what's paying, what's not paying. You know what's try hole. You need to know if they have back hole. You are the one who is asking all the details, right? So you are the one which our logistics specialist, which is hired to do what? To make profit for carriers. And carrier has to trust you. Because that's why they hire you. How are you going to do it? Well, you need to make sure that you know load boards. You need to make sure that you build relationships. Let's not kid yourselves. Guys, finding loads on load boards should be only 10, 15%. Most of your loads are going to come from building relationships. If you know that this guy treated you right, he paid you a fair money, and it was easy on, easy on. Why would you want to go and suffer and try to find something else when you can build relationship and you go back? That's how you guys grow as professional dispatcher. Alex, is that your best app? Well, 
I like that just because it's easier to use. I also have truck stop. I do post my equipment on truck stop. Not a big fan. We're going to do overview next week to see how to search, how to post loads. Also, I am using a lot of load boards from the brokers. But again, guys, I've been doing it for a long time. Here is my load board, my personal relationships. Boom, 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 done, right? That's why I'm able to teach you and spend time for the lives because for me to book loads does not take as much time. You as a new dispatcher, you need to have all your options. You need to have professional load board, at least one. No need to have truck stop at that. Choose the one you like, okay? Uh, get the professional subscription. Why? So you guys can have all those tools, right? For example, quick rate search, thread lines, what's going on right now, right? What, what's happening? Uh, let's see the market. This is a monthly. So you can see the drive-in, flat bets, at least that you have an idea, right? What else is good here? The try hole, all the options. They have lots and lots of um, industry resources. Don't forget to go here, please. They have a lot of videos. They have podcasts on a load boards, on carrier onboarding, on everything else, right? So when you click here, you can read, start educating yourself. Look at this, a carrier startup guide. What do you need to do? Freight, all of these things, they have a lot of information. Look, guys, here is even helping you. If, do you need to have a business plan? How to choose if you have to have a corporation, a partnership? They have a lot of information. Of course, why do they do that? Because they try to sell their, their service in the end of this. But believe me, they give you a lots and lots of information. So at least you educate yourself, right? To comply, what do you need? US DOT, operating authority, have a duty taxes, IRP, IFTA, BOC3 file, on drug test. Look at this. And then when you click, it's going to take you where? It's going to take you to FMCSA. Guys, I cannot stress this out. It's so many resources out there. Start using them. Start Googling them. Go to official sites, FMCSA. Go to the IFTA official site. Go to Kentucky, to New Mexico, to New York, to Oregon when you are trying to open an account, right? Go and check all of this because if you're just hoping you're going to sign up for my class or some trucking guru class or some guy who is promising you great energy, whatever, and you're just going to start making that money, you are wrong. I am, for example, giving you a strong foundation, but resources are out there. It is your job to go and start exploring and learning and making the plan. So first, you need a foundation. What is a solid foundation? Well, terminology, understanding of the terminology. Second step is process, paperwork process between whom? Between carrier and dispatchers, for example, between uh, brokers and dispatchers. What if you're working on the broker side? You need to know this. So paperwork process. Then you need to educate yourself. Who do we have as a third parties? to help us to run this trucking. Who do we have? Well, we have factoring, right? So what is it factoring? What is the principle? Why do we need money? Do you need to know this? If you're just only dispatcher? Well, answer to me this. Are you a only dispatcher or are you going to be a pro dispatcher? Are you the person who is going to look at it as a business or you just come here to make your first uh, few dollars uh, lying promising nonsense because you don't have a clue well that's up to you so what else do you need to know markets equipment right so yes in my classes we give a lots and lots of pdfs i do explain but again can i transfer my knowledge from my head to you that would be very easy probably i would be millionaire right I could charge you 25 grand and just transfer the information and you would be good to go. But no, I cannot do, uh, do that. So you need to improve. Again, go and start learning, right? 
go and start educating yourself. Go back and reread, ask questions. Look at you right now. Even right now, you go in and you spend in your time. We have what? 40 people watching. This is the people who want to succeed because it takes time to go and even listen to my videos, right? Most of you are complaining that they are too long, right? Your videos are too long. Make them shorter. Well, again, I am putting information out there. It's up to you if you want to listen to it or not, right? So uh, other questions. How can I deal? How can I find a carrier? Alex, help me out. How can I find a carrier? Well, again, did you come to this as a business? How do you build any business? First, you need to uh, offer the service. To offer the service, you need to have a knowledge. To get any customers, you need to do steps. So what are your steps? People saying, well, I, I finished the training. I am suffering. I'm trying to find the carrier, but I, I cannot succeed. Please find me the carrier. Well, how many phone calls do you do a day? Let's say you're baking cakes and you open your baking shop. If you do not going to advertise yourself, if you're not going to put yourself on social media nowadays, is anybody going to know that you start baking cakes and that your little shop somewhere, I don't know, in a corner of Irving Park and I don't know, some other street in Chicago, for example. Yes, you're going to see some people walking by maybe. Well, that's a different business, right? At least they have visibility. You are at home. You are a dispatcher. So how are they going to know about you? Well, start putting yourself out there, right? Social media, start entertaining, start adding yourself to the groups, start sharing the resources. But again, if you advertise at nine o'clock that you've been doing dispatch for five years and you have so many carriers, pay attention to this. I see this all the time. I have carriers just adding another truck, this and this. And then 20 minutes later, in a different group, the same person is asking, well, do dispatchers need MC? Do they need their insurance? Are you kidding me? Please. People do follow the same groups, right? So they can see, guys. They can see that you just advertise how good you are, how long you've been in a business. You had your business for five years and now you're asking a simple question? You don't even know if you need MC, if you are a dispatcher or not? So please, make sure that you know your stuff. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass people who've been teaching you. And if you're still confused, then reach out. Reach out back. Sign up for some mentoring programs. That's why students who are really serious, even after my class, they still see me twice a month, three hours each time, and they keep learning. They already working. They already have carriers. They already have the plan, but they are coming back because they want to learn. They want to expand their knowledge. And that's why some of them have carriers like this. And some of you, sorry to break your dreams, are never going to even find one carrier because you simply don't put effort into finding. Being dispatcher is not a magical job. Being dispatcher is a hard work. It's a lot of dedication. It's stressful, okay? And I am not one of those teachers who is going to tell you, just come, sign for my class, and tomorrow you're going to make the same money as me. I'm not here to sell you lifestyle like most of those people do. They act like they're celebrities. Really? To be in trucking as celebrity and afford private jets and big houses first, or you need to scam people, simply just scam them and take their money. Or you need to put in this industry years and years, a lot of hard work and sweat, right? You cannot just dispatch two trucks and pretend like you live in a mansion, right? Let's calculate that. How much money can you make? Well, approximately 500, 600 per truck. So if you're dispatching only two, how much you making? So can you live in a mansion? Use your logic. 
most of those people are selling you fake representation. Trucking is a great industry. Trucking is an industry with billions of dollars. We all can make money. This is not an easy industry. You can scale up. You can get to that six-figure numbers. You can get to that half million, one million, but not with one or two trucks, okay? Not just because you're going to charge one guy 15%. That's another thing. Everybody start posting those videos. Don't short yourself. Uh, don't sell yourself short, sorry. Just start charging those carriers instead of 7, 8, 5%. Charge them 15, 20. I just seen another guy was posting, well, I am charging for my dispatch uh, training $10,000, $15,000. And he also goes on live. You probably know who I'm talking about. Goes on live all the time. Honestly, 10, 15,000 for training? Unless what? Unless you're going to be building them business? Then it's not. It's not a dispatch training. Actually, you're charging them to build in their business. This is a totally different service. So if you're going to take them from scratch, get the company for them, start looking for the carriers, then yes, they might go and pay you 10, 15,000, but stop misrepresenting this. This is not just a dispatch training because for $10,000, I'd better have a golden book, right? And making sure that everything is going to be set for me after the class. So this is a big difference. Understanding the industry, knowing your resources, and really going towards your dreams. Nobody can do it, only you. You can build any business you want. You can find that carriers. I cannot make phone call for you. I, I receive text messages all the time. Alex, find me, help me. But what are you doing for this? When the last time did you went and posted something? When the last time did you try to call and talk to people? When the last time did you go maybe to truck stop and try to talk to the carriers? If you never have done it, do you think the carrier is going to just pop up? And again, when they call you, you need to have a clue. You need to have a clue. What are you talking about? Hopefully, guys. You enjoy my lives. Hopefully, you enjoy my trainings. We are finishing strong with our November class on this Saturday. We added an extra few hours on Sunday just because I want to make sure you guys know the zones. But please, educate yourself. Improve yourself. And it's all starting with the basic knowledge. At least know the difference between posting trucks, searching for the loads. At least know your tools, at least on a debt, right? Know your equipment, start making the plan, start making the steps to achieve something, okay? Uh, what other high informer? How are you, my pretty? Thank you. I am very good. Thanks for watching us. I'll be signing for mentoring soon. Hopefully, we're going to see you. And again, can't wait to start your class in January. I don't see any other questions regarding on the searching loads. But again, the most uh, things you need to know, you need to know your equipment, you need to know the sizes, and you need to have a plan. And how to make that plan, you need to discuss with your owner operator. You need to be able to make decisions. You need to know what's gonna uh, going on and how it's going to play. And I really think... We're going to have an overview probably on truck stop. I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday, but we're going to go back to hours of service because you need to know hours of service. You need to know how to check on logbook. You need to know, is it even possible to make this transit? So as a dispatcher, this is another foundation. You need to know regulations for the trucking industry. You don't have to be a safety manager, but you need to know which states need permits. You need to know the legal way. You need to know, for example, for oversized permits or any permits you need that your driver needs to make sure that he does not get violation, right? You need to know his logbook. You need to know his cycle. You need to calculate, does it make sense to take this load? Because the worst thing is 
to commit to the load when you cannot make the transit. First, he's going to be losing money. Secondary, you are putting the huge liability on his company if it's his company because things can go wrong, right? You don't want to have cargo sitting somewhere in the middle of the country for extra 34 hours. Why would you do that? You need to make sure that you don't take commodities which are not covered on his insurance. You need to make sure that his rate per mile is at least higher than national average. You need to make sure that you know how to deal with emergency situation. You need to make sure you fight for their detention, for their layovers. You need to make sure that you cut the nonsense out because as a dispatcher, this is your responsibility to make sure that transits go smoothly. You need to make sure that your drivers is safe on the road, right? Did you see that uh, map that that shows you to go through the 70? Wow, you're not going to do this, right? Right now is a winter time. Pay attention. Your trucks cannot be light if they are going through Wyoming, Nebraska, if they are going to those states where the gushing winds are flipping them over right? You see those postings on Facebooks and everybody, oh my God, oh my God, poor guy. Well, why is he poor? No. First, that means the dispatch did not pay attention to the weight. That means that his safety was not uh, first priority because if you know that it says there, do not enter light loads, why would you take a chance? That means, or oh, you're rerouting and you go through Oklahoma if you're going to, or you just simply stop until it's safe for you to go. Whose fault is this? Who needs to know the rules? Who needs to know the basics? Dispatchers do, drivers do, safety management does. Brokers, do they care? They should, but they do not. That's why this industry is so challenging. But we as a dispatcher, this is our priority number one. Make sure that our driver is safe. Right now is the winter. Do not ever think that any load, that those $500 or $3,000 or $5,000 is worse of somebody's losing their life. Stop. The conditions on the road are bad. Stop your driver. You can always deliver later. You can always cancel the load. You know what? In the end of the day, you can pay those late fees. But we need to make sure that our driver is sleeping, that our driver is eating, that our driver is going and being safe on the road. So stop taking those team loads just to make extra money. Learn how to dispatch without faking logbooks. Learn how to dispatch with making better plan. And after this, we can change industry for better together. If I can do it, you can do it as well. One person at a time, one driver at a time, one company at a time. Okay? And I love you guys. I'll see you soon. And hopefully, I'm going to see your likes and my supporters. Actually, actually, I see one number one supporter. I'm going to put you on the screen. He's my one number one supporter. He does not admit any of my videos. He always comments. He cuts me if I sometimes get excited and make mistakes, right, Constantine? But I'm just kidding. I feel like he became my friend because I usually answer all the comments. It's me, guys. It's not my assistants. That's me who answers. So you need to have a clue that's 1,000% true. And how do we have the clue? Only by educating ourselves, by learning on our mistakes, and hopefully learning on somebody else's mistakes. That's how you succeed in life. You listen, you logically understand what to do and not to do, and you try to prevent. Wow, we have a lot of Europeans today. Dobry vecher, dobry vecher. Na Ukrainie vje pizne, pizne nič. Thank you, guys. You are the best. Always enjoy your life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex, for putting it all in perspective. You're welcome, guys. 
see you soon. And again, my big shout out to our supporters. Thank you, Kalila. I'll see you on the live probably next week. She's one of our previous students. She's my friend and she is supporting our mission. Thank you, Kalila, for your donations, which are going to go, uh, which are going towards free class. Tomorrow, I will be announcing our new uh, new people who will be awarded the free class. So we're going to hear their stories and we're going to probably talk about truck stop posting searching. So tomorrow I'll see you guys at 2 p.m. Central Time. So 2 p.m. tomorrow. See you again. Love you all. Thank you so much. And make sure that you signing up for our classes, that you are subscribing and also supporting our mission for only $3.99 a month. We can change some lives. Love you. Thank you. Have a good night.